I am presenting Union Gospel Press's Sunday School Lesson Number 8, Sunday, April 21st, 2024. The lesson is entitled Healing on the Sabbath. Lesson text comes from Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. Related scriptures are Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15, 1 Samuel 21, 1 through 6, Luke 13, 10 through 17. The place is Galilee. The time is 28 AD. The lesson this week deals with honoring the Sabbath. It came to the fore in the life of Jesus because of the rules of the Pharisees to the original Sabbath law. These became to them at least more important than the commandment God had given. Jesus did not share their perspective. Today's aim facts. To reveal how traditions become more sacred than the word of God to the scribes and Pharisees. Principle. To show that God's word can stand on its own and does not need man's rules added to it. Application. To obey God from the heart, not just in inward form. Illustrating the lesson. Man needs a day of rest and worship for physical, emotional, and spiritual reasons. Practical points. One. God's people were required to provide food for the hungry. We should likewise care for the poor. Luke 6, 1, Deuteronomy 23, 25. 2. Self-righteous people are always enforcing rules that enable them to condemn others. Luke 6, 2. 3. The heart of the law leads us to praise God. Luke 6, 3 through 4. 1 Samuel 21, 1 through 6. 4. Jesus is to be honored as Lord on the Sabbath and on every other day. Luke 6, 5. 5. We humans tend to look for opportunities to criticize other people. Verses 6 through 7. 6. Believers in Jesus have many opportunities to honor him by doing good, sometimes at great personal costs. Verses 8 through 11. Introduction. Golden text. And he said unto them, that the Son of Man is Lord also on the Sabbath. Luke 6, 5. Today we have two lesson outlines. The first is Lord of the Sabbath, Luke 6, 1 through 5. The second is doing good on the Sabbath, Luke 6, 6 through 11. Introduction. Jesus was thoroughly Jewish, and he kept God's commandments for the Jewish people, including the Sabbath. He attended synagogue on the Sabbath in keeping with the way it was observed in his time. Yet, he became involved in disputes with other Jewish groups about what was and was what was not permitted on the Sabbath. The fourth commandment stipulated that no work should be done on the Sabbath. Exodus 20, 8 through 11, Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15. But the Bible does not specify exactly what that work includes. Jesus used the Sabbath as an occasion for teaching not only with his words, but also with his actions. Those who came to observe and criticize him found that they were not able to defeat him with arguments. The themes of healing and the Sabbath came together in Luke 6, 1 through 11. There is more to the Sabbath than Jesus' opponents understood. There is more to Jesus than they understood. Only Jesus truly understood what the Sabbath was all about, and he left us an enduring lesson. Lord of the Sabbath, Luke 6, 1. <clears throat> and it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first that he went through the cornfields, and his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hands, verse 2. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do ye that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath days? Verse 3. And Jesus answering them said, Have ye not read so much as this? 
what David did when himself was and hungry and they which were with him. Verse 4, how he went into the house of God and how did take and eat the showbread and gave also to them that were with him, which it, which it is not lawful to eat, but for the priest alone. Verse 5, and he said unto them, that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Rubbing grain on the Sabbath. Luke 6, 1. Two Sabbath events involving Jesus are found in this gospel prior to chapter 6. Luke 4, 16 records Jesus teaching in the Nazareth synagogue, attending the synagogue on Saturday as his custom was. In verses 31 through 37, we find him teaching in the Capernaum synagogue on the Sabbath, amazing the people with his power and casting out an unclean spirit. On this third Sabbath, Jesus was passing through a grain field with his disciples. Presumably, he and the disciples had already attended the synagogue service and were walking in the afternoon or evening. This was probably a short walk, since Jesus appears to have observed the traditional understanding about limited travel on the Sabbath, Matthew 24, 20. The cornfields in Luke 6, 1 and elsewhere in the Bible were either barley or wheat fields. Corn in British English is a general word for grain. The husk around each seed of wheat or barley can be removed by rubbing it between two hands. The uncooked seeds are edible and nutritious. It was not considered theft to pick from one's immediate needs. When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thou neighbor standing corn. Deuteronomy 23, 25. Not lawful on the Sabbath. Luke 6, 2. The Pharisees were a fraternity of middle-class men whose common goals included an increased observance of the commandments of Scripture. The Pharisees were respected by the common people, but were not the governing religious authorities. The party with the real political power were the Sadducees, which included the chief priests. They ran the temple and dominated Judea. The Pharisees were based in Jerusalem, not Galilee and must have been following Jesus to evaluate whether he was a threat, a genuine teacher, or something else. What the Pharisees objected to was the disciples picking grain on the Sabbath. By 200 AD, the rabbis had clarified that 39 types of work were not permitted on the Sabbath, including reaping. Mishma Hegaya. as the 7-2, as the beliefs of the Pharisees in the first century. The New Testament is our primary source. There are no rabbinic writings earlier than the Mishnah in AD 200, so we can make a historical guess that the 39 prohibited types of work were already largely in place for the Pharisees who observed Jesus. It is important to realize that neither Jesus nor his disciples violated basic laws like the Sabbath. The disputes between Jesus and the Pharisees over the Sabbath concerned additional rules about what was forbidden on the Sabbath. The rabbis themselves called the Sabbath rules they devised mountains hanging by a hair of evidence. Mishnah Hegaya 1 8. In other words, they believed their interpretation of Sabbath rules was strictly a guess and not a biblical requirement. Thus, the disputes Jesus had with the Pharisees on this matter do not concern overturning the Sabbath law of the Bible as a requirement for Jews. The Sabbath was and remains today a sign between God and the Jewish people, Exodus 31.13. 
there is no evidence in the Bible that the same Sabbath observance was ever required of Gentiles. Although Christians differ on whether Sunday replaced Saturday as the Christian Sabbath, the New Testament implies that observance of the Jewish Sabbath is not required of non-Jewish Christians. Acts 15, 19 through 20, Romans 14, 4 through 10. A Sabbath riddle, Luke 6, 3 through 4. The Pharisees observed Jesus watching for him to make a mistake that they could publicly criticize. They accused him of allowing his disciples to break the Sabbath by their interpretation. Jesus typically answered criticism with riddles and by suggesting interpretations that were beyond the skill of his critics. Jesus gave his critics a true riddle to ponder with the story from 1 Samuel 21.6 about David receiving the sacred bread from the tabernacle of Nob. Exodus 25.30 the consecrated bread in the tabernacle was replaced every Sabbath and it was to be eaten by the priest alone. Leviticus 24, 5 through 9. Yet David and his men ate the bread and the high priest Ahimelech allowed it. What exactly was Jesus saying? Many think he was teaching that hungry people are permitted to eat even food reserved for priests by ceremonial law. Others think he was pointing to David's authority as a godly ruler to make new rulings about what is permitted in relation to the law. Yet there is another way to understand Jesus' riddle. The event in David's life resembles what was happening with Jesus and the disciples. Jesus may be compared to David, the disciples to David's men, and the Pharisees to to Doeg, the Edomite, and Saul's men who were pursuing David, 1 Samuel 21, 7. So it does seem that Jesus was claiming to have a moral and royal authority like David's. He and his disciples were doing God's work as David had been, and he had the authority to authorize his disciples to pick grain in a field on the Sabbath. Jesus was using the David story as a sort of parable and illustration of his authority. The Pharisees in this parable are the villains, like Saul's men were who persecuted David. A Sabbath principle, Luke 6, 5. There were two prevailing interpretations of what Jesus meant that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. It is possible that both interpretations are correct, since a teacher of Jesus' caliber can make profound statements that contain more than one truth at the same time. The first interpretation is that the Son of Man here refers to all people. In this interpretation, Jesus would be saying that people are more important than the Sabbath. Mark 2:27. Feeling human needs like hunger should not be interfered with by any interpretation of Sabbath laws. According to this way of thinking, doing what is necessary to bring food to the hungry is not to be considered work or a violation of the Sabbath. The second interpretation which fits with the understanding of Jesus' use of the story of David's story above is that the Son of Man here is Jesus. He was claiming that he had a special authority to make rulings about what was permitted on the Sabbath. No doubt this offended the Pharisees, who viewed themselves as experts in the law and authoritative teachers. It was a startling claim for Jesus to make to people who did not believe in him. He expected full faith from these Pharisees. By observing him, they should have been able to see that he truly was worthy of faith as the Lord of the Sabbath and even of the entire law of God. Doing good on the Sabbath, verse 6. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered, verse 7. 
and the scribes and the Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. Verse 8. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Verse 9. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? Verse 10. And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. Verse 11. And they were filled with madness and communed with one with another what they might do to Jesus. Two ways on the Sabbath. Luke 6, 6 through 7. The man was full grown and had a hand that had probably been disabled from birth. There was nothing urgent about his condition, yet apparently was not in pain. His life was not in danger. Some might argue that Jesus should have waited until after the Sabbath to heal him. Yet, as will be seen later in this passage, there is a principle to be taught here about what is and what is not permitted on the Sabbath. Jesus deliberately used the occasion of meeting this person not only to do a deed of loving kindness, but also to teach the Pharisees and the people watching what Sabbath is really about. Two ways of observing the Sabbath are on display in verses 6 through 7. The way of Jesus is teaching and healing. In the synagogue, he observed the Sabbath according to the customs of his people, focusing on the words of God in Scripture. He was also observing the Sabbath with the intention of doing good deeds, the work of God in the world. The opposite way of observing the Sabbath is seen in the reactions of the Pharisees. They were probably in Galilee to observe and evaluate Jesus, since they likely were from Judea. They were apparently there to criticize. They would be caught by Jesus' words, verse 9, and exposed as lacking true devotion to what the Sabbath is supposed to be about. They wanted to find an accusation against Jesus. Perhaps they expected him to teach something in the synagogue that they deemed wrong or even blasphemous. Perhaps they expected to see him heal someone, which in their minds was a violation of the Sabbath. A Sabbath question, Luke 6, 8 through 9. Did Jesus know their thoughts because he is divine and therefore omniscient? Or... Did he know them because he understood human hearts? The Gospels often shows Jesus knowing things supernaturally. John 16, 30, 21, 17. Yet, they do not require us to see him as independently exercising omniscience during his earthly ministry. This is, the, this is the mystery of the incarnation. When the Son of God became a man, he did not for a moment relinquish his omniscience or any other divine attribute. Yet, he also took on all the weaknesses and limitations of all humanity, except for sin. Hebrews 2, 17, 4, 15. Scripture indicates that as a man, Jesus did not rely on his own divine omniscience for his knowledge, but on the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the revelation of his Father, so that he would be like unto his brethren, 2.17. Whether from his knowledge of the human heart or because his Father revealed it to him, Jesus knew the intent and thoughts of the scribes and Pharisees. So he, so he asked the man with the disabled ham to rise. While the man was standing, Jesus asked a question as he did when he healed a paralyzed man. Luke 5, 23 through 24. Jesus used this occasion to teach something his disciples would never forget. It was a lesson about the meaning of the kingdom, the people of God, and the mission of God 
has given Messiah and his disciples. Jesus' question is not just about what is or is not permitted on the Sabbath. It is a question that penetrates to the very heart of God's will. It tells us that a Jewish Sabbath or a Christian Sunday worship service is not automatically godly simply by virtue of being held on the correct day. Jesus took these scribes and Pharisees beyond the external form of religion by placing two options before them, to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil. The scribes and the Pharisees planned evil to accuse Jesus and to get him into trouble. Jesus planned good to teach and to heal a man with a disability. Jesus' lesson was pointed and simple. Merely keeping the form of a command does does not make one righteous. These scribes and Pharisees were in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, but they were doing evil. A godly person keeps the intent and the form of God's commands. It is good to obey a commandment like honoring the Sabbath or gathering with the church, yet the wrong intent or the lack of desire to do what is right ruins even an act of outward obedience. Life and death on the Sabbath, Luke 6, 10 through 11. Many things in this world need to be restored. The Bible tells us what is broken in people and in creation. The world was subjected to God's curse because of human sin, and it groans for wholeness, Romans 8, 20 through 22. Jesus came to do the work of God to teach disciples what God is doing, and to save a people within Israel and beyond the Jewish people who would have faith in him as Messiah. Jesus is the restorer of the broken world, and all things will be gathered together in him. Ephesians 1.10 The question he asks, is the Sabbath intended for good or evil? was answered in the miraculous healing of the man with the withered hand. This healing confronted the scribes and Pharisees with two questions. First, how could Jesus have divine power to heal unless he was doing God's will? Second, how could people have any doubt about the authority of his teaching when such a miracle demonstrated it? However, the scribes and the Pharisees were untouched by the miracle. They were angry at being rightly con condemned by his words. The miracle only added to their anger because they were so thoroughly proved wrong. Jesus' teaching is not just about the Sabbath. It is about all of the commandments that are God's will. Jesus did the Father's work on the Father's day, and Jesus' disciples are to imitate him. Questions 1. What might lead us to believe that the walk through the grain field was a short one? 2. Why did the Pharisees think Jesus' disciples were breaking the Sabbath law? 3. Did Jesus and his disciples actually violate God's Sabbath law? Explain. 4. What was Jesus' point in citing the example of David and the tabernacle bread? 5. Who is the Lord of the Sabbath and what does that mean? 6. Why did Jesus not wait until after the Sabbath to heal the man with the withered hand? 7. Why were the Pharisees in Galilee? 8. How was Jesus keeping the Sabbath for good while the scribes and the Pharisees were keeping it for evil? 9. What principle about obedience did Jesus teach through his question to the scribes and Pharisees? 10. How is Jesus' Sabbath restoration of what was broken a picture of what is to come? This concludes the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, April 21st, 2024. Thank you for listening. God bless.